Hello and welcome back to the channel. No, you have not read the title wrong. I really am comparing the Royal Enfield Continental GT to the Norton Commando 961. Now you might think I've gone completely mad because the Norton is 10,000 pounds more expensive than this bike. But I think there's not that much in it between the two. So let me tell you the differences between these bikes and I want to find out is the Norton really worth 10 grand more than this. There's no denying that both of these motorcycles are absolutely stunning. They are a true modern classic. Now, the big difference between the two bikes is that this Royal Enfield is made in India and the Norton is made in England. And that means that there's a huge difference in production costs. Not necessarily in terms of quality because this bike is remarkably good quality. None of it feels cheap and it's surprising for the price that this bike is. It really is remarkable what they can do uh, manufacturing bikes in India. It's incredible. So hats off to India for being able to produce incredible motorcycles at such an affordable price. Now, a lot of British people are very patriotic and they want to be able to say that their bike was built in Britain. So a lot of people who used to love Royal Enfields no longer like them because they're made in India. Now they have the Norton and that is an option, but it's £10,000 more. So is it really worth that much more? Well, I think if someone who didn't know anything about motorbikes was given both of these bikes and they had to look around them and say, how much do you think both of them are? I don't think they would think there was a much of a difference between the two. I think if this bike was built in Britain, you could probably double the price um, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. I would have loved to do this video with both of the bikes side by side, but unfortunately I can only ride one bike at a time. I haven't quite figured out how to ride two bikes at the same time yet. Um, and unfortunately the old man is still in Wales, but more on that to come soon. Getting back onto the Norton after riding the Royal Enfield, you really do feel the difference in power. This is a much more responsive and uh, much better performing bike. Um, and it's so much more of a sense of occasion. The amount of character is unbelievable. And a Royal Enfield is a characterful bike and it's much more characterful than most other new motorcycles. But when you compare it to this, my God, it is a world of difference. This is just a whole new league of character. The Norton really is a head turner. And you'll notice when you're riding this bike that you see a lot more people stopping in their tracks and turning their heads and looking at you go past on this bike than they do on the Royal Enfield. I think that is partially down to the noise this thing makes. Now, as I said, the silencers on the back of this are about half the size of the ones on the Royal Enfield, and it is a lot louder. Riding them back to back, you really then notice the difference. Now, when I wear my earplugs and a helmet on, you can barely hear the Royal Enfield until you open it up, and it is a lovely sound, but it does need an aftermarket exhaust, whereas this sounds fabulous from standard. Um, but that's partially due to the fact that this is only on sale in the UK, so it only has to comply with UK regulations, um, and it's lower production numbers. So I'm sure that comes into um, account where when you're mass producing a bike, uh, there's probably a bit more restriction in there than there would be for this. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So if you know more about that, then do let us know in the comments. 100%? 100%? Christ. Before I carry on, please do follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We post loads of behind the scenes videos 
stuff and photos that you won't see on the YouTube channel. Uh, the link to both of those pages is in the description. And if you enjoy the channel, please do uh, give us a subscribe. It is absolutely free to do so, and we are inching closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers. And to reach that number would really be a dream come true for us. So if you could help us out by pressing subscribe, that would be incredible. Now, I just want to point out a few things that I've noticed getting back onto this bike because I've not ridden a Continental GT since 2022. So you may well have seen my review of this bike back then. And I will do a video going out on this bike specifically focusing on this machine. Uh, I probably won't do a, a thorough review because we've already done one on the channel, but I fancy taking it out uh, to a pub or something, getting a pint and just talking about the bike. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and leave a comments down below if you want to see that. Um, but the first thing I noticed comparing this to the Norton is that the clutch is way lighter. The clutch on the Norton is quite heavy and I did point that out in my Norton review and it has kind of um, almost pulled a muscle slightly in my forearm uh, because it really is a hard clutch to pull in. This is ever so light and really easy. So this is a much easier bike to ride in general. It's really, really easy to get on with. You can just get straight on it. Uh, if you're a novice rider, you won't have any issues on this bike. Whereas the Norton is a much more uh, raw machine. It really is a stripped back motorcycle. It's what motorcycles, uh, the essence of motorcycles has always been. Um, this still has plenty of character, but compared to the Norton, it is nowhere near. The engine feels a lot smoother um, and you don't get those vibrations that you get on the, on the Norton. Uh, it's probably uh, balanced a lot better, if, if you might say that, but I like those vibrations on the Norton. It adds to the sense of occasion of the bike, whereas this feels a little bit more uh, subdued, but it's a joyous bike to ride. It sounds fantastic. The exhaust note is brilliant. It's rather subtle with these standard exhaust pipes and they are good looking, but they are massive. Uh, when you compare it to the Norton, these silences on the back are double the size. They are absolutely huge. So if you hear one of these with an aftermarket exhaust, which I rode an Interceptor last year with S and S uh, end cans, and that sounded fabulous. So these can really sound incredible with an aftermarket exhaust. And that would really take the character to the next level because this is kind of being choked. Uh, it's not being allowed to breathe properly like it wants to. Um, but this engine is brilliant. It's a 650 compared to the Norton's 961. And to be honest with you, it doesn't feel all that much slower than the Norton. It's a much smaller bike and it, the, the power figures are much less, but it certainly keeps up, I would tell you that. Uh, the Norton is a little bit quicker, but this doesn't feel slow by any means. It really is a swift motorcycle. And when you're riding on back lanes in the countryside or up a mountainous road in India, then you certainly don't need any more than this. It is really weird comparing this bike to a Royal Enfield and I do have to keep um, stopping myself and thinking am I doing something stupid comparing these two bikes but I think they're very similar bikes in terms of style, in terms of the kind of person who would want to buy one and the way they ride is reasonably similar but the main difference as I said is the price point and it is a massive difference. The one thing that this bike does like barely any bike has ever done to me before, uh, this is just as much so as the Moto Guzzi did for me, is it just makes you want to get out on it again and again and again. You think about it when you're in bed at night. <laughs> um, I won't tell my girlfriend that. But um, you want to just get out on it the next day and you really are eager to get out on this thing at any next opportunity. I think the same could be said about the Royal Enfield, but for me personally, this has made a huge impact on me and I can't wait to just get back out on it. So I'm, I'm a bit upset that I don't have it for longer actually because 
Uh, I've got to take this bike back in a couple of days to the factory in Birmingham. So it's going to be nice to have a long ride on it just to say a final goodbye to this thing. Uh, but I'd like to get hold of the cafe racer version um, and the limited edition versions of this bike that are now out. So hopefully they'll have some on the press fleet very soon. I've just received these new uh, riding trousers and a lovely pair of leather gloves from our channel sponsor, XL Moto. Now these are both from Ride and Sons, which is one of the many different brands that they sell on their website. Uh, these are absolutely great, brilliant quality. They don't break the bank. They've got knee padding, hip padding, uh, the proper lining so that you don't uh, tear them apart if you do come off and they're really comfortable and a lovely fit as well. And these gloves are fantastic quality for the price and they look really cool as well. So if you're looking for a new pair of gloves or trousers or any other item of motorcycle clothing or parts uh, or tools and things like that, then do check out XL Moto through the link in our description. The riding position on this bike is perhaps a little bit more comfortable for me at six foot one compared to the Norton. Um, it's a really nice riding position. It puts you over the tank nicely, uh, but it's nice and comfortable. Your, your hands are in a nice position. Your feet are nicely placed. Now, you've got these indents on the fuel tank, which are the same sort of thing as the Norton. But for me, my knee doesn't go in there at all. So I'd have to be sort of, um, a lot shorter for my knee to fit in that indent um, so that's not the end of the world but um, yeah if you are tall your knee won't fit in there the side stand on this one is much further back than the Norton and it kind of stops right where your foot peg is so you have to kind of dig out your foot peg a little bit to get to the side stand the radiator on the front is a much nicer design on this Royal Enfield than the Norton. The Norton is kind of just like a, a rectangle placed on the front, whereas this is nicely designed into the frame so it looks in keeping and it doesn't stand out. It's not in the way, it's just uh, part of the bike. It looks really well designed. So much better design on that. Now the brakes on here, these are by Brie brakes, which means by Brembo and the Norton has Brembo brakes. Uh, so the brakes on the Norton are your full on uh, heavy, hardcore Brembo brakes and they are really, really good. These are plenty good enough, but they're not as good as the Norton. The mudguard on the Royal Enfield, you've got a mudguard extender and it protects the bottom of the engine and the exhaust very well from muddy roads and lots of muck and grime, which we get a lot of in this country. Um, the dials are very beautiful. They're a lovely classic design. Uh, they're a little bit plasticky compared to the Norton, but for six and a half grand, you've got to expect some areas where they've saved on cost, that being one of them. Perhaps the indicators look a little bit cheap, but they do the job and for six and a half grand, you can't complain all that much. The wheels are much narrower on this bike compared to the Norton. The Norton's got a much fatter back tire and front as well. I do wish this bike was a little bit cheaper. 17,000 pounds in the UK for one of these does seem like a lot of money. It is made in England though, so obviously that means it's gonna be more money, but is it worth it? I mean, it is absolutely brilliant quality. It makes you feel incredible when you're on the back of it. The character is like no other. The sound is fabulous. The performance is great. So it really is a fantastic bike. But would I part with an extra 10,000 pounds over the Royal Enfield? Well, I suppose if I had an extra 10,000 pounds lying around uh, willy-nilly, then perhaps I would. But that is a lot of money, uh, so perhaps not me personally, but I think the kind of person who's buying this bike is probably uh, someone who's retiring and they're buying this as a retirement present for themselves. And it's the kind of bike that they grew up l lusting afterwards. Uh, and it's a new version, which is much more reliable than the old ones. And it gives you a modern motorcycle, but still has the feel of the old bikes. So, Really, it's down to you whether you would part with the extra money 
for this over a Royal Enfield, but they're both fantastic bikes in their own right, and they are slightly different, but they're very similar as well. So if you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like, subscribe for plenty more coming up, and leave your comments down below. Which one of these would you have if money was no object, or if you're being sensible, Tell us, let's start a debate in the comments, which is the better motorcycle and which one would you choose?